Welcome back. Welcome back to your Liberty Radio Friday night open lines where every week, every Friday night, we take a couple hours and we get together, we hang out, we talk about what's going on, uh, we crack some jokes, usually some bad jokes. Like there's a lot of jokes that, that just completely miss Everyone should be prepared for that up front. Just know what you're getting into. This is like, uh, it's kind of like open mic night in a way. You know, people are going to get up and, and try out some new material maybe. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, anything can happen, folks. Anything at all can happen on Friday night. Open lines here on your Liberty Radio and... The lines are now open, Uh, so you can call in, you can talk to me, you can yell at me, you can, uh, I mean, this is your time, folks. This is where you get to be the best part of Liberty Radio by becoming part of the show, not not just, you know, as a a monetary contributor or somebody who wears uh, bomb-ass t-shirts around town that everybody asks, hey, where'd you get that t-shirt? No, you can actually be a part of Liberty Radio. You can put your voice uh, into the time capsule. It's, uh, I think it's one of the coolest things that we do in the Grand Theft World community, alongside, obviously, the town hall that takes place every fortnight for you folks across the pond. Uh, and everybody else too, but that's how they say it. They say Fortnite. That's two weeks. Uh, if you come from the land of the Britons. Speaking of the land of the Britons. Oh, by the way, I'm I'm the drizzle. I run this shit show. Um, but speaking of the Britons, since uh, yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't look like we have had any callers yet, which surprises me a little bit. Because uh, I thought, oh, hey, look at that. Ash did actually make it to the show. She's not going to call in, though, just so you guys know. Uh, she decided to disappoint us again this week. But what was I saying? See, I got sidetracked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Angry North, Angry North, our buddy, friend of the show, Angry North. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting choked up already talking about Angry North. He sent me an email earlier today. We've been, uh, we have been messaging, as the kids say, back and forth this week. And because uh, he put out a new song this week. I don't know if you guys tuned in for the Wednesday night show or not, but we played it on the Wednesday night show. It's there in the in the media feed somewhere. You can go and find it. It's only two days ago, so it's probably the most recent thing. But he sent me an email and uh, apparently I inspired. Oh, hey, Death to Tyrants has showed up in the live stream chat. What? You should call in, buddy. It's a call-in show. You're not supposed to just sit in the chat. Anyway, anyway. So uh, Angry North sends me an email. And uh, apparently, I inspired him to uh, do an analysis video of one viral phenomenon. Totally legitimate, by the way. Oliver Anthony. And he published it to all of his channels a little bit earlier today. Uh, I actually saw it before he sent me the email, but sending me the email was definitely a nice touch. Thank you, Angry. I know you're not listening right now because it's probably almost 3 o'clock in the morning there. Um, But yes, thank you for the email. And so uh, he does it. He's breaking down the whole Oliver Anthony thing from the perspective of being an actual protest songwriter, right? Not just somebody that they grab. There's like, oh, you can sing and play a guitar. Come up here and play this role. You look the part. So, uh, yeah, unless you guys start calling in, 
Uh, we're just going to sit here and watch Angry North uh, rip apart Oliver Anthony for better part of an hour. That's, that is how I'm going to punish you for not wanting to call in to, uh, to the open line show. So um, ball's in your court. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, y'all want to watch some Angry North? All right. We can do that, too. I mean, it's, it's open lines, you know. It's whatever you guys want to do. Let me see. By the way, I do have it set. The Zoom link uh, to call in, in case anyone was wondering, because obviously I'm a little bit high at this point in the day. I'm probably leaving out important details that I should have written down before the show. But the link to the Zoom call, which is what allows you to call in to open lines, <clears throat> that is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel and has been there for about 20 minutes now. So as long as nobody else has posted anything, it's still the most recent post in the channel. And obviously to anyone listening right now, I would ask you to refrain from posting in the channel so that it can stay the most recent post in the channel, at least until we go off the air tonight in a couple of hours at midnight Eastern. Uh, do me that solid and I will appreciate it greatly. <clears throat> See, I'm starting to phlegm up because y'all are making me talk. Nobody wants to call in. That's fine. We're going to watch some Angry North. Oh, and by the way, I have it set up so that I don't think you even need any, uh, what do you call it, authorization to get in to the Zoom room. I think it'll put you right on through. It's already hooked up so that your audio will hit the stream. Uh, it's this live radio, folks. This is your chance. There are people listening right now all over the world. This is your chance to let them know what is on your mind. I would recommend that you call in. And not just because I don't like listening to the sound of my own voice. But it's your time. You do what you want with it. All right, let's see if I can find this. I'm sure it's probably buried at this point. Ooh, that's, ooh. We got notifications, Media Bear. Oh my God, we're going head to head with Media Bear right now. No wonder nobody is calling in. They're all hanging out for safety chat. That makes sense now. All right, let's see if I can find this. Search for, let's try Angry North first. Oh, holy hell. This is the first thing that came up. All right, how's the stream looking? Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we are firing on all cylinders. Apparently there was a button that I forgot to click. All right. Going once. Going twice. No calls at the beginning of the show. Uh, I'm just going to have to start punishing you with the angry north. Why don't we check the chat really quick? Hey, dead fella showed up in the live stream. What's up, man? Setting up. Ah, 
Aha, I see there has been some conspiring going on in the live stream chat. It looks like, based on the tiny amount of information that I'm seeing here, that somebody got Yona hooked up with some new hardware. So that might, might be why we have not seen the Yona yet, but I guarantee you, if he gets up and running, he is going to jump in to the stream and it's going to be all over at that point, folks. You are not going to be able to get a word in edgewise. Look, look at what happened last week. Yona came in, took over the whole show, the whole two hours. It was, it was the Yona show. So like, if you, if you want to call in, like if you're sitting there and you're thinking, nah, I'm going to wait until a couple of other people call in. Uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to work up the courage to do it. Look, you don't have to get on camera. We don't care about that shit. We're just doing open lines. You call into the open lines to your favorite radio. But I'm telling you, once the Yona becomes a part of the program, your opportunity to get on the mic is gone. So you should probably do it now. Just saying. Yeah, I bet Yona is high. Most definitely. Most definitely. All right. Well, if you don't want to call in, uh, it's it, you're getting angry north. All right, let's see. I got to go on here to make sure. No, 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 no. We want to do this thing. Now, the other thing that's really, really cool is you don't have to keep the stream on when you call in uh oh that was not exactly what i wanted it to do eh i guess that'll work no hmm interesting 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 i'm playing with new toys by the way that's why you're hearing all these sounds coming out of my mouth so I went to share something all right let's pull that down for the moment hmm well I went to share the audio ah I see what's going on there no I don't want a screen share just want to share the audio. Eh, we'll leave it. Although I can't control anything in the meeting. So let me see. Stop. Let's stop the share. Let's try this over again. Do advanced options. No, that's not going to do it. So I want to make sure if you pop in, oh, I guess I don't really have a choice there. I can't just leave it. Maybe I can. Well, hopefully it'll tell me if people come in. Because right now it's not. Yeah, and I'm not seeing an option that'll let me do it. All right. Well, we're going to hope that this works. Oh, yeah, B1 was supposed to be stopping by, dead fellow. He might be by later. That's always a possibility. All right, so let's see if we can make this work. Let's go to have a feeling. Yep. All right. Let's move this around. Live radio, folks. Live radio. Nobody wanted to call in. So, um, yeah, we have to go to plan B.
There we go. All right, so let's see what Angry North has to say about Mr. Oliver Anthony. And uh, maybe at some point, somebody will feel like calling in. Who knows? Hello, YouTube, BitChute, Odyssey, wherever you are. Um, Oliver Anthony, who is this guy? He stole my image. He even sings in an angry, over-emotional way. So I feel like I have to create a video and an article about this organic, overnight, totally unsuspicious, purely audience-driven, global viral sensation. It seems to be international law, anyway, that all YouTubers have to make a video about him. I'm actually overdue, and um, I'll probably get a strike again for not doing this sooner. Or maybe just for not being as gushing about Oliver Anthony as is required. I do find it incredible how almost everybody, including so many high-profile conservatives and supposed liberty lovers, are, um, how much they're so in love with this guy. Um, almost everyone sharing and reinforcing this message that this guy is just so special and so deserving of all this attention and adoration. Almost everybody agreeing on something. Where have I seen that before? And how could that possibly be a sign of something bad? Hmm. Well, most people would just say, of course, that he's just blown up like he has because his song is so great and his music and his message are just the right thing at the right time. It's just resonated with something deep in the population. The population loved it and the market has spoken and rewarded greatness. Well, I'm sorry, but I beg to differ. I've watched a fair bit of footage of him and I can sort of get what he has in terms of quality in his music and as a performer and he has charisma and he's, he's likeable. Um, I can see that. And I actually genuinely like sad, folky music. I've done for years. But I think a big part of what we are seeing here in terms of this universal praise is crowd dynamics. And it's a bit of a emperor's new clothes effect, if you ask me. And sadly, that's not the worst or the most concerning part. The biggest thing that I think he's being wrongly praised for is that he's sharing an important message. I think that in that respect, at, at the best, he's an empty box. There's just, there's nothing inside. I think people are desperate for something and for someone kind of, they, they believe to be authentic, speaking up for them about the real core issues. And people have got the impression and the feeling that he's doing that, but he's not. So here's a bold prediction straight off, which will probably enrage some people, but it might intrigue others. And some people would probably say that it's just obvious. I feel like I could basically guarantee that Ant Oliver Anthony, I keep getting his names mixed up, Oliver Anthony is going to be used by very rich men, north and south of Richmond, to further their interests far, far more than he'll ever serve the interests of ordinary people, if indeed he ever actually does that. And I think that is the plan. And it's the reason why this viral overnight sensation has been engineered into existence, whether Oliver Anthony himself fully understands that or not. And yes, I definitely think this massive, sudden, explosive rise has been engineered. And I'll explain why shortly. I think Oliver Anthony, whatever his intentions, has obviously become a superstar, a megastar, a bandwagon, and a self-propelling snowball. A lot of the noise now that we're hearing is, is people chasing the hot topic to be on trend and to try and get more clicks for themselves. And yes, there's an aspect of me doing that right now. To get any reach in this online world or to keep any reach you have, keep any influence, keep any audience, um, it seems, you know, you've got to be on trend. And I'll come clean about that right now. I've been meaning to do a podcast or some general kind of talking chit chat videos for quite a while now. And I've been planning to do a general introduction video, which I still intend to do. But 
I saw a couple of weeks ago that YouTube offers creators information on trends and it actually suggests topics to make your videos about, which is probably an indication of how much most YouTubers have, have really got in them in terms of ideas or original thoughts. So anyway, it occurred to me when I saw that I would do a few of these click chasing videos on current bullshit trends in popular culture, trends and events and things. And I thought it could actually be fun because I hate just about every aspect of popular culture. So this Oliver Anthony phenomenon has just kind of landed with perfect timing, like a penny from heaven. So yes, this is another video about Oliver Anthony, as you will have gathered by now, but this one's going to be a bit different to most out there on the subject. It's going to be more questioning and more critical. And by the way, if this video gets seen by anyone who is not already a very open-minded follower of my stuff, a subscriber to my, to my channels, and there's a big if there, but if it is, then I'm probably going to get some fierce criticism back from the new disciples of Oliver. And that's fine. That's free speech. Most people would not agree with me about the vast, vast majority of things. I hold unacceptable views about just about everything. I'll explain who I am at the end as well. Uh, that's not as important as what I'm going to share first, but just in case this is listened to by anyone who's not a subscriber already. So first of all, about, about this viral explosion, I find it really strange that people actually believe in this day and age that any artist and any song can just go viral on the internet just because the public and a few influencers maybe like it. How naive can you get? Do most people still somehow not have any idea at all how centralised the control is of almost everything we get to see in the mainstream media and on the big tech platforms, let alone anything that, that blows up on this level globally in this sort of way? If something goes viral like this in this day and age, it's because massive commercial interests, most likely including the big tech platforms, have decided for it to go viral. They want it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a caller. Let's see. Let me see if I can push all of the right buttons. Oh, I'm so high, y'all. This is so difficult. All right. Got the NASA space age software working tonight. Caller, where are you at? Hello. What you hauling? Oh, no, wait a minute. No, that's a different show. Uh, who do we have on the line? Hey, this is your boy, Recycle Bin Laden from yeah. West by God, Virginia. Oh, what's up, RBL? I'm just chilling. I was just kicking it. Dead fella told me that I should prank call your radio show and smoke some weed and get all weird. So I was like, okay, I was going to do that. Nice. I don't know. I don't know about the prank call part. That's, that's kind of rude. <laughs> I just, I was, I literally was just playing counter strike Two, <laughs> And he's like, Hey, oh, you yeah. got to get on drizzle show right now. <laughs> like, okay, sure. Uh, I'm glad you called in. We were, uh, we were just Doing some listening. Oliver Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Yet, yet another I watched Oliver your, uh, Anthony video. Yeah. I watched your, your, your deconstruction of that, the lyrics and stuff. And it made me think it was some good food for thought. I saw a dude the other day in some, uh, some khaki pants, like the kind, um, all the fed boys wear. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> Hmm. I don't know. It's just pants, you know? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, or, you know, I mean, some people see it as a uniform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to believe anymore, man. You know, I think they like to give us uh, hope that is very mm -hmm. fragile and then break it. Yeah, well, repeatedly, it, it seems like there always has to be like there has to be an emotional attachment to a tragic figure, right? Like there there always has to be that yeah. element that can turn on a dime at a moment's notice and you always have to be waiting for that shoe to drop, right? 
Like you can't, you can't have an icon in any industry without uh, that. Um, it, it's almost like a feeling that you have that, that something's not quite right about the person, right? Like that there's, there's just something that at any moment it's going to come out. It's going to destroy the whole illusion. I, I mean, it's like any major, whoever's the pre- presidential president, president, uh, prejudicial presidential candidate whoever Easy that is to say. yeah whoever that is um the, how did they get there you know you didn't you don't get to pick a good person like i think you know it's all it's all rigged like it's the same kind of idea as like you can't trust the stripper when she smiles at you <laughs> it's like this these people are just there to to do a job and it's not for you. They don't work for you. Yeah. Their job is to trick you and hopefully get your support. Or at least I'm money. like worried about a, I'm worried about some weird judo flip into like a right wing totalitarianism from, you know, from the, from the jaws of the left wing totalitarianism. Now we're saved and we get to have this right wing totalitarianism. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the other wing of the bird. That's all it is. Yeah, and I I think a lot of people were waking up to the two-party illusion, like the the false left-right paradigm, Mm -hmm. and then the Trump thing happened, and they got sucked back into it, like, oh, okay, this time it's for real. Well, there were... A fair amount of people. Yeah, I noticed there were a lot more... a lot more people playing the Pied Piper role this year because Trump, obviously, he's the the current archetype, right? But then you've also got uh, Bobby Kennedy, right? Uh, He's got his little contingent of faithful followers now that are uh, latched onto him and doing, you know, whatever he wants. You've got uh, uh, Vivek, right, who apparently has somehow miraculously managed to capture a large segment of the alleged libertarian community, which is just amusing as shit to watch. It's really, really funny. (laughs) Who else? Who else has been, has been slowly like, uh, gathering, uh, some, some momentum. Is Gabbard a non-factor at this point? I don't know. I don't think I'm the right person to ask that question because I pay no attention to her whatsoever. Yeah. I feel like the last thing I heard about her was, oh, she's maybe with the WEF. Yeah. I was like, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, she's former military. Like that right there should just be a, a huge red flag based on what we know of what they used soldiers for. When it when it comes to things like behavioral conditioning and uh, you know using yeah. people as uh, uh, information couriers and just all the crazy shit that they were doing with people with hypnosis and drugs and I mean you you sign your life over to the U.S. Army whatever branch it is uh, the U.S. military I should say you become their property. They can do with you whatever they want. We have no idea who this woman really is. Right. At this point, she may not, because what do they do? Like they break you down and rebuild you in their image. Right. Exactly. They destroy you. They demoralize you in the, in the boot camp, Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's my whole point right there is we only know of her, you know, what has what has transpired since her military service we don't really know anything about what she was doing while she was in the military and we might know a little bit more than that about like her life before the military but that's pretty much it i i'm just a dumb hick in the woods i smoke a lot of weed and, and i think i have some observations once in a while. She's her speech is so similar to that of Barack Obama. That that's the biggest red flag I can think of when it comes to her. It's just like 
dude, she, her, her measured speaking is, is exactly as I remember this man. And that's got me thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I can't trust this lady. No, I, she, she talked that fancy I talk. That. I can't trust this woman. Well, it's not even, it's not even just like fancy talk, right? Like what I want to do now. The cadence. It, it's like, yeah. there's probably some science behind it. Some yeah. Yeah. These are, figured these out. are like fingerprints. Uh, things like cadence, tonality, inflection, mm. and people that have been trained to speak, especially over a long period of time. Like these are yeah. these are imprints that uh, half the time. And why would they you don't train someone to doing speak it. unless you were like some nefarious puppet master? Anyway, right? Like, wh how does she get this training if not from? Well, the deep I mean, state or something. you can train yourself to speak in all different sorts of ways. I mean, you can literally train yourself to speak differently than what you currently speak today. It takes a while. It oh, takes I, my voice has changed several yeah. times during my life. I, I settled on this. I don't know why, but when I was a telemarketer, I realized it's the best training in the world for voice acting. Oh yeah. You're just listening to yourself talk for eight hours a day, drinking too much coffee. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it, Frank Herbert talks in Dune about the power of um, using speech and tone. Like that's, it's kind of like, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's what's where my head went when you were talking about it. Hmm. Tools of statecraft. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, going back to your, your point, they are also tools of manipulation, mm -hmm. which is why it goes hand in hand with sort of the one in the same. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, folks, uh, this Zoom account can support up to 100 simultaneous users. Um, so don't be afraid to jump in on the conversation. The link is in the Telegram channel. So, all right, let me ask you this, RBL, because this is something that I've been thinking about the past couple of days we're seeing a lot of action prior to the beginning of the official campaign season right because it doesn't really yeah. get started until we hit january but we're already seeing the republicans have already had their big uh i don't even know if it was televised but they had their big debate um which was, I didn't watch it. I haven't watched any clips. I've just listened to what other people had to say about it. And I was like, yeah, I spent my time way better. But there's been a lot of action on the campaign trail already. Do you think that it's part of an effort to overstimulate people early? So they're numb later. Yeah. When it matters. Yeah. Sure. That's a that's a good thought. Yeah. I think that's astute. I mean, again, I don't know. I'll I'll never be able to prove it one way or the other, but just kind of seems this point, like that I would think be everything is a form of manipulation. Like it seems like just everything is. Yeah. I, I we were talking about this in the hangout. It's just one thing after the other now. Like it used to be like a celebrity would die and people would talk about it for two weeks, mm -hmm. you know, a few short years ago. Now it's like blip, blip every day. It's just like 10 yeah. celebrities are <laughs> and nuclear war and a chemical shit storm explosions everywhere. Oh, and the world's on fire. Oh, and 73, you know, or six, however many people, uh environmentalists were caught setting the fire in greece right like 76 or 73 some amount 79 like, it was 79 yeah thank you yeah. and then i remember seeing videos of in the california wildfires these kids coming up with like lighters and just just like and obviously it's arson and they're like no this is mm -hmm. gaia is angry with you give give up your homesteads or whatever like it's just fucking ridiculous, man. 
I, I'm sorry, I'm ranting and I'm I'm very high and I I'm out of my depth here with the drizzle. The no, drizzle. The the storm of justice. Storm. You are you are wiser than me, sir, and you are more well read. <laughs> and uh the other day I got invited who's onto that, the who's WTF that forum. At me? That's Mr. Deadfella. That's his laugh. <laughs> What's up, dude? Oh, I was well, telling Deadfella. I was happy to uh, not be on the. I, I like. I didn't show up. I didn't get the invite in time because I was running around. Mm-hmm. And then I watched it, and I was like, "Oh, I'm so glad I'm not there." Because like you guys were all brilliant, and there was I could not think of one thing to add the whole time. I was enjoying the conversation, man. I enjoy you guys. I'm so no, happy. Like the I got one to you were having right now. The one you were having right now. I don't know. I spend uh, I spend time considering possible scenarios for the future, and every now and then, like something will crop up that I don't know what to do with it. Right? I don't know yeah. what what category to put it into or what outcome it is meant to catalyze. So I like to at those moments. I like to pose questions to other people and see what they Mm -hmm. think about it you know because the great thing about being human is we all see things just a little bit differently from one another but if you never ask other people what they think about something and like you only get offended when it doesn't necessarily agree with what you think it should be you you miss out on a lot of stuff. So I just try to stay open-minded, you know? I'm really high right now. <laughs> those, are good, <laughs> those are good thoughts, good words to live by. Yeah, I think I just rambled incoherently for probably a good 30 seconds at least. No, dude, I, that made a lot of fucking sense, man. Yeah, you always make a lot of fucking sense, man. It's nice to hear, because it's it's not uh, something that I've gotten from people <laughs> for <laughs> the majority of my life. Usually it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> no, you said, you said you like to look ahead at the future and plan for events and and uh, and look at you. Look where you've relocated to. <laughs> Fucking brilliant <laughs> shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And, and know, myself. I, I, mean, I don't I know if it was the smartest thing. Sort of planning. Because, like, literally, is, the, the yeah. ocean's like right over there. Yeah. Like, I'm not well, joking. You go not even a kilometer, and there's ocean. No matter where you go, there's going to be a, an issue. Like, I was looking at the maps of, uh, like, if the New Madrid fault cracks or you know this or that happens and like flooding comes in i'm in the appalachian mountain range i'm fine from that but you know i'm also probably not near any military targets like super near but maybe i am because who knows kind of there's some stuff yeah there's some yeah the more i've learned since i formed this opinion yeah we've got the i think it's a SETI program runs out of some site where there's no radio. I'm sure there's some other stuff going on under that. And then we've got the secret subway to Washington mm-hmm. bunker. Yeah. You're not and too far from there's that a power weather. grid. There's a power grid um, junction. I think also here that would be a target. So, but yeah. And also luckily we're, we're just completely rimmed in with power uh, nuclear power plants that can melt down. So, I thought Enjoy. I would be safe out here in the in the woods and the mountains, you know. Run to the mountain. Run to the hills. No. You're not safe really anywhere. <laughs> if you think about it. I mean there's meteors flying by. It's I mean there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I mean there's Never really there's all kinds of stuff. Do what that you can happen. Yeah. Um, that's why I just try to figure out what's likely to happen. That like, way. for example, supply chain issues and mm. increases in prices and of fuel and everything else, accordingly, like, are very likely to happen very now, like, right now. 
Well, very soon. As far as I know. Very, very soon. My wife watches the peanut butter channel every day. That's what I call it. She watches these YouTubers that get emails from people in the uh, shipping and manufacturing and all, in the food industry, supply chain. Okay. And and so she's like up on it, man. And she's always telling me like fuel fuel's going up at the beginning of September and um, food, food price inflation is going to spike and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, they're using uh, uh, animal feed in the human mills now because of shortages in grain. So we're getting like deer corn and, and cow wheat or something to make our stuff right now. It's, Mm. it's real and people don't aren't aware of it. So I I just, and I haven't heard anybody talking about it because I guess it's become so ho-hum mundane, but ever since um, it was Ice Age Farmer went AWOL, the issue became where's he instead of where, what's going on with our food. And then it was just a non-issue after that. I think people are not, I don't know. The only person that I've heard talking about it regularly is uh, David Debine over at the adapt 2030 channel he's been following um the the harvest and the Mm -hmm. um lack of productivity on uh on the global markets i guess it or i should say maybe the declining productivity of the uh the global grain markets um because it does seem like yields have been steadily trending downward, and that's not just um, it's not just wheat, it's not just sorghum, it's it, it, it's rice, it's it's everything, it's all yeah. of the grains, right? Um, and it's it's all happening at the same time. It's all interconnected. There, yeah, um, they're outlawing fertilizer. At the same time as saying like, you know, growing rice is terrible for the environment. So they're making initiatives to like reduce the rice production and they're paying farmers not to grow food. Like, do you guys, do you guys think this is it? Do you guys think this is it? Like, this is what's going to usher in the beast system? They've got a, I think, and I've thought for years that the United States of America has done what it was meant to do. Like we were the hammer and we had to hammer every free nation that used, you know, real money and wasn't controlled. Hmm. And so our purpose has been served. The the PNAC or whatever, that vision is fulfilled. Now we're just in the way. So we have to be brought down low. And and we're so big in order to bring us and and I mean, I think that they really want to bring every country to the brink of like total devastation in order that they will s- subject themselves to the new world order. Bring the in the new international government. economic system, right? As the trilateral yeah, commission. Yeah, it has to be built on the on the ashes of all former institutions. They have to be like, um, like, what did it say in the spars? In the spars thing, this was like was sparse twenty five or something like that. This was like one of those yeah, little yeah, yeah. scenarios to where they like, I think, yeah, they try to figure out. Well, it's just like lockstep in event two hundred one. Like they try to figure out, they plan ahead and guess at you know. And in spars, they talk about like, okay, so there's this pandemic, and we give them medication, a vaccine, or whatever, and it turns out to be terrible, and 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 faith is lost in all the institutions you know and i'm like well that plays right into what they need to do they need to like bring us low so that we'll accept the hand you know the helping hand mark of the beast yeah and and everything that comes with it yeah it looks like we're going to see it in our lifetimes (laughs) well they're trying for it that's that's what this decade is all about. Uh, this this is the time to consolidate power and uh, to essentially lock out 
the rest of humanity from anything resembling uh, life as we used to know it. Um, this this is the most complete takeover of control uh, of the entire species that has ever been attempted in our history as far as we know. Um, yep. the, the scope of it yep. is fucking mind-boggling when you, when you step back and you look at the entire picture, right? But they, they have goals that they have to meet, right? It's all these things that are occurring that we're seeing as individual pieces on the playing table these are all steps on their path, right? Every time they, they get something in place, like, well, shit, like the, the vaccination program, right? It, it wasn't even that they had to make sure that everybody took it, right? That wasn't the point at all. It was some of the people had to take it. And the ones that take it, they're eliminated from the playing table. So now we're dealing with a smaller subset. We have to divide right. them up even more, right? So it's, right. we're going through a process to get to a point. But even that point that they're trying to get us to through this process that's going to unfold over this entire decade, that is just a stepping stone in another process to get us to another destination. Right. Yeah. They call it the great work, right? The Freemasons call it the great work. The grand yeah. chessboard. I don't know. I That's really how I've been able to like see what's going on is to look at it like chess. Like to see where the the pieces are that's how the morning of 9 11 when i heard it on the radio i just knew it was too convenient for george bush i didn't know every other thing that i learned later but i knew enough to be like this is sus as fuck mm -hmm. and uh and it was like yeah that's how i described it i was like well this the night was here and they castled already <laughs> you know it's like but, but James like nailed it, man. There's this book that came out. It's called The Great Taking by David Rogers Webb. It came out June 21st of 2023. I'll send it over. You should check it out. No, I wrote uh, an article for uh, the Grand Theft World's website <clears throat> two years ago now, I think. Right. Maybe a year ago, a year and a half, something like that. Uh, where I basically I I outlined exactly what they're trying to accomplish in this ten years, and that this is what we were going to be watching unfold. I don't think anything that I wrote in that article has been incorrect so far. I should probably go back and reread it. Read it right now, <laughs> please, yeah. dude. Read it right now. Yeah. Nah, that's nah, why you, that's why long. you're thinking of it. It's too it's long. important. It's more important than me talking. <laughs> whatever it is. No, 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 no. Because no, this is this is what open lines is all about. This is this is us getting stuff. I just out. called in to show off my new media bear record. It's one of a limited edition. I know. There are only a hundred. I know. I'm jealous. I am because uh, media bear wants to send me one, but I'm not sure it would actually make it to me. So I haven't given him my address. I don't want it him to comes waste in it's one. Really, it comes in a really nice um, black plastic bag that's all printed. It's got Dr. Clown on it on the website. It looks awesome. Yeah. I bet it sounds awesome too. He sent me, I don't know if you can see on the video, he sent me a couple of, um, like he sent me a sticker. And yeah, I see the sticker. Of, um, pins, the it's one's the the uh, the go button on my turntable. It says I will not comply. 
It's pretty awesome. Nice. That's so sorry cool. to derail the I was sorry to derail the whole thing. You said callers and I was like, yeah, well, this is what I got. I got a media bear record and I wish I was listening to you read that thing you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, you got post... more requests for you to read it. You got more requests for you to read it. Who, In where? the chat? In the chat room. Yeah, the this DT. is why we're here. We're here to listen come to you on, read dude, this. Read it. Like, this is why you woke on, up this that? morning. What am I? Dancing monkey? No, it's your show, man. It is my show, <laughs> which means I get to decide what the fuck I do and what I don't do. Read your own words. <laughs> no, I'm not going to read my own words. The words were written for you to read them, not for me to read them. I already read them. I wrote them. I know what it says. Prophecy. The drizzle it's, prophecy. No, it's not prophecy. But I will put the link in the show <laughs> yeah. notes when yeah. the replay yeah, that gets would, that published. Would be awesome. That would be awesome. Well, they, they had to tell their own minions the plan, and you were smart enough to look into that and figure out what the plan is, right? It's not hard. It's not brain rocket surgery or whatever, right? Like, you just have to pay attention. I mean, like, don't you think in a normally functioning capitalist society, anyone who gets to see through the game would get rewarded? I mean, in a normally functioning, like, yeah, it's it's weird how you're punished for being right. <laughs> if If you're right early, you're punished mm -hmm. right and if you're right late you're no, you're like accepted like it's cool to come later and bitch about it but if you try <laughs> to stop it if you try to stop it before it happens or while it's happening you're just an asshole but after it's happened you can bitch about it all you want that makes you a cool rebel or whatever i, I don't understand it things are so weird like i remember when someone would have like uh, a mohawk or like spikes or you know what i mean like weird blue hair and you'd be like that person is an anarchist that person believes in individuality and and you know doesn't accept authority and blah and it's like now you see that person and you're like the same exact like blue hair spiky whatever and it's like that person is a totalitarian communist boot licking Go that person worships government dong and pharmaceutical balls like <laughs> it's just it's the fucking craziest shit i've ever seen in my life and i'm not even old enough to be like it's that much different i used to pay a nickel for the candy bar like it's it was four or five ten years ago i don't understand how quickly uh, dude i remember yeah. nickel candy i'm that old i'll out myself you're older than me a little bit like three years i think or something could be what year were you born I'm, uh ass end of 79 oh yeah yeah uh, i got five years on you i loved it i was one in 81 and two in 82 it made it really easy to remember until i was 10 and then it got complicated you guys are lucky man you got what? to see the the non-digital age before it all hit the shit hit the fan yeah i thought about that with 9-11 because after 9-11, the cameras went up everywhere and all these crazy wiretaps mm -hmm. and stuff. I was like, bro, no, kids aren't even going to remember before this stuff and they won't know what they're missing. You know, they yeah, won't ever the digital know age fight. began with the personal computer and the CD. That was when it started. And that, was, that was 80s into 90s. Because... Right. I remember, let's see, I remember being like 10, 11, 12 years old, going over to my friend Josh's house. They had an Apple IIe, so that would have been 84, 85, 86. That's basically a glorified word processor. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we but were, were we were learning shit, man. We were learning MS DOS at ten years old. We didn't know what the hell it was. We were just like, "Oh, this is neat." I remember nineteen ninety or ninety one. One of my neighbors in the ghetto had Wolfenstein on a computer on a big monitor. 
and uh yeah, that kind of blew my mind that was the first computer game besides like oregon trail or you know that, that i'd ever seen and i i was totally I, I was five or six when the nintendo when the nes came out so i don't remember a life without video games and i think like something was stolen from me by just like the, the poison apple of the video games you know, for sure yeah i can relate to that i definitely it was can. thrilling and exciting but now that we're into the vr like learning to kill i'm just like oh this kind of sucks <laughs> yeah and the other thing that i've noticed too is that the industry has seriously shifted from from what it once was like the the quality of games has gone way way down but the quantity yeah. has gone way way up which seems to be kind of the natural course of things under the crony capitalist system we have to go build a new thing and then they have to come take it over and ruin it and we have to go build a new thing that's that's i think that's what that is some of my favorite games were just done by groups of amateur developers like put up on mod db and uh yeah i'm I'm actually friends with a couple of people that worked on a mod that i loved so that was i was fortunate to, to be able to not only play the game with them but you know maintain a relationship with them yeah that would not have been possible in the analog age though that's the thing is there's yeah. there's always trade-offs right with new technology or uh, better technology because a lot of it's not really new it's just improvements over time it's like every new tech has to first pass through uh, the trial of does it kill all humanity through military use <laughs> and then after that like we get to <laughs> Oh, now we can have refrigeration or whatever, you know, what yeah. I mean? like pretty much everything's a weapon first. So before it's before it's beneficial. Well, the other thing, too, is the most funding tends to come from, at least in the United States, from the federal government. So if you're developing a new technology or innovating in a particular space that the government's interested in and they're the ones who are actually paying for your research you don't actually get to control any of your work they own it all yeah and if if you independently come up with some new technology they can just come in over you and say oh national security mm -hmm. and then okay well you're, you're gonna make lots of money don't worry but we're not gonna let people have this yeah and they do that. There's a company called Nano Solar that uh, came up with a over ten years ago a way of printing large PV cells, like like you would print something on paper, and they're very thin, and you just put them over your house. And, and um, the the price per watt or whatever was like comparable or lower than the the type of cells we use, and the government came in, the military, the Navy, they're like, we need this. This is for us. And they're like, I'll be damned. I've still never seen anybody have it or sell it. You know? Like the private sector, I guess if it's open, uh, it's open for large, large bids and, and I've never seen it anywhere. It's a shame because it's been around for so long. We need better batteries. We need better we need a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm really saddened by the whole um, state of green energy or whatever. Like, because I'm a kid in the 80s and uh, I got an award, of course, for writing about how we need geothermal and wind and solar energy and and warning about how our, our, you know, Earth will be uninhabitable if if we don't get it. Like, I won the award for the young writers. You know? That that was the message they wanted even back then. Mm -hmm. 
you know, pre Greta. And it's like, I was totally for that. And, and I still am, but I, not at the expense of like, okay, let's freeze uh, 2 million grandmothers to death and, you know, all the other things that are involved. And this sloppy, the, the way they're doing things to maintain like the profits for corporate interests and missing the spirit of this initiative, you know, like. It's so stupid. I don't understand any of this shit. Like the lithium battery cars that catch fire, mm -hmm. but get you charged with coal. Like none of it. It's money. It's it's yeah. all about money. It's never about what they say it is. It's yeah. about money. They were they were going with this one idea. They were going to have hydrogen gas stations. Mm -hmm. And it's like the whole reason they were doing it was to maintain the gas station thing. Like it's it's just it's crazy. I don't know. It, What's it? I've tried to make sense of most of it, and the only way that any of it ever makes any sense is you have a small group of families that essentially run everything in the world. They decide what the rules are for everybody else, but they don't have to abide by them because they run the shit. Yeah. Like I, I can't, I can't make a, a simpler description of what the world looks like than that. You think that's how it would end up anyways? Over time, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there would eventually be a group of human beings smart enough to figure out how to elevate themselves above the rest of the species and essentially lock everybody else out of you know, their little dealie that they create for themselves. And be right, completely uh, self sufficient, cut off if they were cut off from the rest of the species. Because, I mean, it just seems like that's a scenario that would naturally, naturally come from the types of hierarchical structures that human beings create. Right. Well, you've got the beginning, what, 13 years ago, uh, the rich started going miles deep and building these huge underground Yona was talking about Yona was talking about this the last Friday. Deep oh, underground cool. military bases. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the seed vaults and the um mm -hmm. genetic banks and stuff like that. Like it's like, hey, we're about to go crazy and destroy everything topside to get rid of these plebs. Let's keep copies of the original stuff and let's go get safe and prepare. And you're wondering why there's a toilet paper shortage and you're blaming these people you see on the news who bought like uh, you know, an extra one. And it's like, maybe they're stocking the fucking, the mall under the ground three miles deep. You know what I mean? Maybe that's where all the, <laughs> maybe where that's where all everything went. Yeah. I mean, they still haven't explained the, uh, 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 the, the rail, uh, container shortage. Like why, why is it all of a sudden we lost, what was it like 10 or 15% of, uh, the rail cars, the cargo containers yeah. for, uh, Railroads, they're just gone like overnight. They're like, oh, we it's just don't possible. have them anymore. I mean, there's <laughs> piracy in shipping nowadays. I learned recently on the Peanut Butter Channel, the that the my wife watches, that it's um, like a good channel. Canned goods are now a high mm -hmm. uh, theft risk, and they never were, but now they are. Fuck. Well, I know. Um, 
Didn't they stop making... I don't think it wasn't that they stopped making mason jars. It was uh, the, the lids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you couldn't find good lids. And if you can't get a good lid, you can't get a good seal and your food spoils and a country man can't survive. <laughs> That's the whole thing. They listened to country folks can't survive. And they were like, what did he say he could do? Get fish, poison all the rivers. What mm-hmm. else? Tomatoes. I can trail sky. <laughs> uh, what else? You know, it, they go down the list and they're like, every way this country folk is surviving, and we're going to fuck that up. Let's uh, genetically engineer some kind of disease in the deer. You know, fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever. I feel like they're totally. I just heard the other day they um, they rounded up a bunch of deer and tested them and found that 10% had COVID. So I assume they killed those deer all 5,000 or whatever number it was that they rounded up with helicopters and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just to make sure that when they starve us to make us eat bugs and take a chip and and or mark or whatever, that, that there's no alternative. There's no venison, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... That's, that's it's, my kooky conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory, though, because if you look at every... Country. It's Monsanto's business plan. Was part of it, but it's it's also uh, the playbook of any communist government that has come to power in the last hundred and fifty years. Yeah, they really, use yeah. the food supply as a weapon against the people. They've done it over and over and over, over again. And over. The only difference is now they're doing it to the whole world at the same time. And yeah, we might not have seen major effects from it yet. I I would argue they're about to drop, uh, but it's coming. Like the, I I don't see the the harvest yields that are going to be coming in over the course of the next four to six weeks are going to be anywhere close to even what they had last year just based on what I have been hearing from people who are actually out, you know, like surveying crops and stuff. I have another and last chilling year observation. wasn't a good year. I have a chilling observation based on the fact that recently I've been like, I want some fruits, you know, I want some mm-hmm. vegetables and um, the, I wanted grapefruit. My wife wanted peaches, you know, so we get fruit from the grocery store and bring it home and it's like it's like it's old like it's like two years old but they kept it in a chamber full of nitrogen gas or something to keep it from and now that it's in the air it's like Nosferatu in the sunlight and it's Mm -hmm. just like because all this stuff just rots instantly as soon as we get it like it's like it's old and they're just selling it so like yeah I'm just saying like you get bad bad fruit and vegetables once in a while, but I think this is indicative of they're going, they're scraping the bottom of all their barrels. Yeah. It's empty. Everything is empty. And it's really going to hit, you know, it's going to continue to get worse and worse and worse and worse. You know, I mean, like prices for key- food. Yeah. Like I was what saying, the- Deadfella, personally, when we were talking earlier, like I wish you yeah. would be able to store some, some, long-term food like beans and rice or whatever you know like everybody i know should do that and that's one less zombie in the horde you know like we were talking about those kids are like i got my knife uh for my bug out uh, yeah. where are you gonna bug out to bro you're gonna come bung out to my house and try to steal my shit with your knife like <laughs> you're not thinking very far ahead like i don't understand this thinking this is, i just get a bag and put like some socks and uh paracord in it and i'm good like i mean i saw a chart that described how most of the fertilizer for the world comes from russia and ukraine is that mm-hmm. did you can you guys like resonate with that like do you think that that, that is real yeah it's uh, jimmy Dore was speaking on that 
uh, it's it, it's a large, huge, huge amount, and the the uh, conflict there is one of the reasons. An embargo is one of the reasons that it's been so in short supply for years now, because they don't want to fund the Russian military by buying fertilizer from them. But it's so crazy let's all starve how, to death. But it's crazy how when they make moves, it's it's on multi levels. Right, right, because they're also saying that that's bad for the environment and climate change or whatever. So at the even same time, what you it can off. get is more expensive than what it would have been anyway. Right, so you're not going to have it. But it's but only more expensive guys, because they wanted it to be more expensive, not because I, it I actually some needs thought, to be more expensive. I put some thought into how to... Um, True, truly go out in the woods and just live off the land and and also how to like because I, I read about the cow farts methane problem all those years ago and the interesting thing is a rabbit a female rabbit will give you through her offspring in a year's time a similar by weight amount of meat as a female cow can you don't get nice. the milk or the butter or the cheese, but the rabbit does not fart. And the rabbit's uh, little cocoa pebbles are the very best fucking fertilizer straight mm. out of the butt. Like they don't need to be composted. They can go right in there. And um, I burned some, I had to cut down a lot of bamboo because it was going crazy and I burned it and I had a lot of charcoal from it. And I mixed that in with this rabbit booms and, Everything we planted in that was just fucking taken off like crazy. So hmm. I mean, we can make our own uh, amendments to fertilizers and things, you know, and animals will help us with that. And that's that's how that works. Chickens, rabbits, good idea. I can sell you some in the northern, north central West Virginia region. <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, depending on how things go, I may take you up on that. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I, I not saying make, I want to leave me, the land of endless summer, but you know, nobody well, you knows. Get what's some chickens, happen. some heat resistant chickens down there. The kind that that they get, I think they're probably oh, smaller. They're, maybe yeah, there's plenty of them. <laughs> they're all over uh, the place down here, man. Oh yeah. Uh, but when I when I got those, I was like. These are the birds I associate with freedom. Fuck eagles. Mm. You know what I mean? That's if we really, we really need fundamentally to be independent of the system. We have to like figure out stuff like growing food. Right? Right yeah. or wrong? Uh, no, you're like, right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I feel right. like the best thing we can do is local production and like spreading out. Instead of because like factory farms and mega cities, they both create such concentrated pollution mm -hmm. that it's harder to be like digested and assim uh, uh, assimilated by the planet. It leaves like a worse stain, I guess. More, it's like worse because it's concentrated, right? Isn't that how that works? Typically, yeah, makes sense. But I feel like if we spread out and just like you know. Each would live off like five acres or so, each small unit. And like really use technology like to help us grow food instead of fucking whatever we're using it for now. <laughs> Mind control and population reduction and fucking yeah. endless war. And shit like the meme that's going around with the peaches, they're like picked uh, on this continent packed on that one and shipped to this one you know like we do that with the chicken we we grow chicken in america we we send them to china they slay it and and you know process the chicken and then ship it back across the pacific ocean and these tankers like just shit oil 10 gallons a second just bleh, this shit oil into the ocean all day nobody cares right <laughs> everybody goes to the grocery store and they're like buying their weird shit that's made from like 19 different 
chemicals that are assembled in big factories in a strip somewhere that's like fucking burning the atmosphere. <laughs> like <laughs> impossible. Wow, chicken dogs. Yay. <laughs> like fucking think they're and then they go home in their Prius and they're like, yeah. <laughs> fucking everybody thinks they're doing it, man. Mm-hmm. And if you really want to do it, you got to figure out how to get more Amish. I think that's what I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think they figured something out quite a while ago. There's a movie called Crass. It's like a documentary. Crass, there's no authority but yourselves. And it's like Penny Rambo and all the people in the band like being interviewed. And a lot of them live together still on his farm. And uh, they grow like leeks and shit in the garden, and there's like that's what they're all about, man. Like, just they try to live off the land and not deal with society because it's fucking bullshit. And they can't really like they tried to stop it and they couldn't, so they just like get away from it, live in the nature, escape the insanity. I guess that was. I'm done talking. I guess that was my thought. <laughs> well, I don't think there's any way to stop it. Um, not at this point. They're, they have advanced uh, way too far. I, and I, I said this probably a year or so ago, maybe even a little bit longer than that. It, you can't stop this train now. It's impossible. Um, it's got way too much momentum. Yeah. The only thing you can do at this point is to try and find a soft spot to land when you jump from the train before it goes careening off the track because that that's literally the only thing left for it to do is to come off the track. Everything else, all the prep work has been taken care of. It's been done. We just now need an event to kick off the cascade. That's it. And then it's going to be pandemonium for a while. And they're going to let it be pandemonium for a while. Because <laughs> again, that's Here, what about that's this? part of the plan. Uh, what about this? But dang, Trump's been assassinated. And then they send out like, uh, black ops to impersonate rednecks and drive around and shoot you know <laughs> shoot shit to get the news involved no i'm not even kidding like mi6 was dressed up as jihadis running around baghdad blowing shit up and shooting ak's and 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 they weren't fucking british men who were army men who were fake doing a lie so they could do a thing that's what will happen here if something yeah, that's what i'm thinking like well they pop trump and then yeah there's like people pissed and they're like oh blah blah talking and hubble like organically but the uh, government itself sends out the death squads of fucking fake rednecks to go blah 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 and then it's like war on all fucking rednecks and they're, they're like hell yeah and they enlist the fucking friendly eight million fighting age males they just shipped in or whatever you know mm-hmm I don't think that's enough. And it all though. fits together. But you know what I mean? It's it's mm-hmm. way more than that. It's like 50 or 60 probably, you know, million extra weirdos that are just here. I, I don't want to be mean about like, you know, there's it's good got, people, but it's got when you're fighting age value. male refugee, that's weird, right? Like, is that, what does that mean? It's Where's a little strange. women and children? It's a little strange when you see yeah. groups of people coming across the border and they're all young males. They're all about like 30 years 20, old. Yeah, 24. 20 to 30 years old. There's no women. There's no children. Yeah. They've all got short hair. Yeah. They're just ready to go. I mean, I don't know. I still think they're going to... They're going... If... The idea is to take down the United States from the inside, right? With by having basically people planted inside the country so that you just you basically wake up one morning and the United States is gone, right? Yeah. They just took it over. You're and then going what's the thing? to need you control the radio and say that we already won or something. 
No, it's it be even easier than that is you have either NATO or the United Nations come in after uh, some sort of horrific uh, thing with the government. It doesn't matter what it is. Yes. Just something that would w- cause the American people to rise up against their government. All right. That would be total chaos in the United States. You would need some sort of peacekeeping force to right. step in and 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 stabilize the situation, right? It it, it would and help if you already had like uh, a hundred thousand or a couple hundred thousand young capable men from wherever to be immediately deputized. Quickly to put be on a blue of, helmet. Yeah. Oh my God! You're a genius. You're a fucking genius. I'm not the genius, man. It's fucking Bill Cooper, man. It's in his book. I'm right. just extrapolating out for the the, right. the present circumstances. That's it. Yeah. As I, I keep waiting for the holiday where they go around and start rounding people up. Hasn't the happened thing is, yet. The thing is, the uh, the constitutional rights only apply to a set of people. Mm-hmm. And they can be replaced. Mm -hmm. And those rights don't need to be, you know, you don't need to do anything. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's like the same as as, um, getting rid of the old people. The young people will think whatever the hell you tell them. So, the murals at Denver Airport all the old women are dying and they're giving the children to the soldiers and it's only the children that are getting away from the death only the children and the children are the age you could tell them whatever you know yeah i think that's really the vision that they have well they always go after the children right because again it's it's been known for a long time that if you get a human being at a young enough age you can turn that individual into pretty much anything you want them to be that's the Jesuits saying right the first seven years Uh, I don't know if it's Jesuit or somebody else Uh, I've heard I've heard the the quote attributed to a number of different people so at this point, I'm like, I don't know who said it. Yeah, but it's true. The right? formative years. Yeah. Right? So you're clay. You're formative. You're forming. Formidable. I know formidable. Tony quotes it quite a bit. Something to the effect of, um, give me the child until the age of seven and I'll show you the man. Something like that. Tony, the logic professor? Correct. Yeah, he's cool. I like him. Yeah, he's all right. I like when he's on the the show. GTW. It's funny because at uh, town hall, he's uh, he's a lot more laid back than what he is on the Sunday night broadcast. So you'll hear him say things in town hall that sound out of character. Until you get to know his uh, his sense of humor, because <laughs> it's it's just it's like a completely different person. It's funny, which again should I lo- give I love his moniker, incentive. the logic, his title, the logic. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to step on you. No, it's okay. I was just gonna say a- it should give people incentive to sign up and become a member of the Grand Theft World community, so that they can find out what I'm talking about because we right. have some wild conversations at town hall folks. You don't even know. That's right. You can see the many sides of the logic professor. Mr. Tony. Those guys are really smart. And I didn't know um, 
the story, the backstory on Richard Grove. At first, he was kind oh, yeah. of like a enigma to me. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, do you do you have a second just to tell it? Who, it's pretty me? interesting. Yeah, just I don't just I don't short... know it by heart. Um, Isn't it just? I'm trying the to gist remember. of it. He's I'm a whistleblower. Who it was that he, he was, was working for at the time? He was making great money. He was like mm-hmm. living the dream, mm-hmm. super millionaire guy in a cushy mm-hmm. job, and then he's like, "You guys are doing it wrong." And he gives that all up to tell the truth to try to do something right. Well, kind and of, it's like kind of. So, it what did uh, to to kind of flesh the story out a little bit more for folks who don't know it is. Uh, Richard was working, man, I cannot remember what the name of the company was. Um, but they were, they were selling software that was, um, supposed to help companies be in line with, uh, Glass-Steagall, I think it was, which was new legislation that had gone in to regulate something i can't i can't like i say i don't remember what all the details were but anyway he discovered through one of his clients i think that in the software there was a back door that would allow you to go in and basically bypass all of the regulatory stuff that was built into the software to comply with glass steagall it would basically just like let you do whatever the fuck you wanted right and then (laughs) to top it all off it would leave no trace no data trail that that you had done that it would make it look like you were still in compliance right and so when richard found that out from his client he took it to his bosses and he was like like we have a problem here this needs to get fixed you know this is this shouldn't be here and they basically made him an offer they said we can give you money and you can shut up about this or like we can basically just wipe you off the face of the earth you know we can make you shut up and go away either way and he was actually on his way to the world trade center on september 11th 2001 he was he never made it he was stuck in traffic uh when the plane the first plane hit what was it the north tower that got hit first uh he was sitting in traffic watching uh you know kind of things unfold in uh in manhattan and uh it was it was all because he was on his way to uh, give a deposition against his former company uh, on that particular morning. He was actually supposed to be uh, in one of those towers when the plane struck, but he was stuck in traffic uh, instead, as luck would have it, or fate, or destiny, or, you know, people call it all different kinds of things. Uh, But that was when things started to uh, unravel for Richard and sent him on a journey that, uh, you know, produced the man that that we now have today that uh, runs Grand Theft World and autonomy and all sorts of other cool shit. Nice. Uh, Is that the story you were talking about? Uh oh. Did we lose RBL? Do we have a podcaster down? Let's see. Yeah, I must have put him to sleep with the story, dead fella. Damn. I'm sorry, I had to step away for a, <laughs> an addiction. Sorry. An addiction? <laughs> yeah. Dude, terrible. what are you addicted to? Come on, man. Uh, Don't hold out on us. What you got? What you got? Uh, coffee. <laughs> and, uh, so, man, I don't want to admit that I smoke cigarettes, but I do. Yikes. That's fine. I needed one. And I manufacture my own because oh, nice. I'm 
I'm big brained and the money I save making my own cigarettes pays for my weed. It is a difference. And coffee. Yeah. Pays for my coffee and weed. Imagine that. I'll be right back. I'll smoke a cigarette myself. <laughs> but I can't talk about the way I do it because then they'll figure out how to stop me. Ah. Uh, <sighs> no, when I was still smoking, I rolled my own. Yeah. I should if I was really smart, I'd just quit smoking. But it's not easy. Pain, man. It's it's pain. More difficult than you think it is. Six dollars a carton is pretty smart. It feels smart anyway. Yeah, that's pretty smart. I would take that deal. Smarter yet would be to just not be smoking. Yeah. Dude, it took that me thirty five years to quit. to quit. So Okay. Okay. So I can thirty five years, yeah. Let me do some quick math. I've got five years of smoking left and then I have to then I can still catch up with you. <laughs> yeah. I was 13 and I'm 43. Oh, damn. Yeah, I was 12 when I started smoking. And I quit two years ago, July 3rd. And the best part is I don't have cravings anymore. I can watch somebody else smoke. I can actually be around somebody else smoking. And I do not have a craving for a cigarette. Did you do some psychedelic thing? Did you meditate or something? Like, did you eat the pizza with the mushrooms on it? I did replacement therapy in okay. order to break my addiction. Because I knew that the hardest part of it was the psychological addiction, right? It wasn't the physical part. Because I, let's see, last time I got sick, uh, like really, really sick, like can't get out of bed sick, was June of 2019. Me and a buddy went to a Nationals game, um, and I was already starting to get sick before we went to the game. Like I could feel it in my lungs, um, but I was like, fuck it, man. We got, we got tickets. The Cubs are in town. I'm fucking going to the game. I'm going to have a good time, and I got sick as a fucking dog, but it was worth it. Um, but yeah, I, I quit smoking. Like I didn't smoke for that week while I was sick. Cause it was just, it was too painful. Right. Yeah. And that's the physical addictions over. It's all psychological since from correct there on. Correct. Cause that's cause I got through that week and the thing that got me smoking again was I was mowing the lawn and I was like, damn, it would be really nice to have a cigarette when I get done. And so I was like, oh, mm. fuck. All right. So I know I can beat the physical part of it. I got to figure out the psychological part. So I did. I figured it out. And I rewired uh, my brain to not yeah. be addicted to smoking anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking interesting. That's, that's powerful. And that's what we need to know. I need to know this. Because I've quit several times. And then I'm like, you know what? I can have like two a day. And that's that turns into two packs. Like Yep. Eventually it does. <laughs> it's crazy. Cause yeah, I tried to quit several. So times. you replaced it with I tried before to replace it with weed. Mm-hmm. Doesn't work. I tried that before too. No, because it you just want a cigarette when you're done smoking the weed. Yeah. Yeah. It's like fuck. I used uh uh, the the fume product. Let me see. This thing. This thing right here. Let's see. What is that? Is that a bong? No. It's just something to suck on, right? And they yeah. have like different flavors they put in it. And it's just like a flavored air. Yeah. And you're it's, like, I feel a, like I'm smoking. Uh, yeah, so they're like little little fiber cartridges or cotton or something. I don't know what fabric they are. Uh, and they infuse them with different oils. And instead of smoking a cigarette, you just suck on this for, you know, five minutes or ten minutes, however long it would normally take you to smoke a cigarette. Um, That's the pull or, quote. Yeah. You just or, suck on this. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, yeah, if you can if you can get yourself to do that for 21 days straight instead of smoking a cigarette, 
you've broken your addiction at that point. Does it have nicotine in it? Nope. No. No. The, it's just and the, the flavored thing, air. Yeah. And the, the, one, the one flavor that I found actually worked better than any of the others was black pepper, black pepper oil. Because mm. it, it still kind of gave your, your mouth a similar sensation to what it feels when you're inhaling smoke. Yeah, you're like, this is the real shit. Yeah. <laughs> this is right here. <laughs> this dude snorting turmeric and smoking black pepper oil. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Like, I might actually have to look into something like that, yeah. Because people say like bubble gum and this and that. I'm I'm just be like, yeah, I could maybe eat two racks of ribs and still want the cigarette at the end. Like I can't replace it with food. Like nothing. For me, it's the nicotine, man. Nothing beats. Can smell food. some of these middle school markers. <laughs> yeah. Now, if we all right, like if I were, let's say, I have my own land. And I can grow anything on that land that I want to grow. I'm going to grow mm -hmm. tobacco, and 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 I'm going to, you know, dry it and cure it and whatever you need to do to prepare it for smoking. But that's not the same thing as what we buy at the store, right? For sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm just yeah, at even... the point now where I've been able to get away from all of those toxins. I don't want to put them in my body again. I'm good with that. But if I can get some pure tobacco, like I know a um, uh, uh, dude few hours north of here who, if I want, he'll bring me cigars of natural tobacco grown here in Mexico. That's crazy, man. I was just yeah. thinking about bringing up cigars while I was smoking a cigarette. And you bring it up. Like, that's yeah. the shit, man. Right after, like, some marijuana, like, there's nothing like cigars. Well, it's because it's it's natural, right? It, hasn't, it, it hasn't gone through any industrial processing or any of that bullshit, right? Backwoods cigars are, they're, like, usually really fresh and soft, natural leaf outer wrapping. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you, you carefully unwrap that and get this tobacco out and put your weed in there. That's so good. But you got to like roll up almost a quarter or, you know what I mean? A lot of weed just for one nice one. I've had, I've yeah. had some Monte Cristos. I've had some Monte Cristos before. And while you're smoking that shit, you feel like you're actually at the tobacco field. In Cuba somewhere. Mm. That is one place I would like to visit, if at all possible, before I leave this place. I would love to go to Cuba. Just because we've been so prop propagandized about it, you know? Mm. I want to see what it's really like. Yeah, yeah, you, you have all these questions. You know, like a ton of questions to ask in a coffee house or somewhere. Yeah, and now that I almost know Spanish, I would actually be able to talk to people. That's awesome. That's my my one regret. I uh, no longer work in construction, so my Spanish classes are over. Mm. <laughs> But I, I made the total, totally made the best of that. Like I was learning, my vocabulary was getting, you know, two words a day minimum. That's not bad. You can start stringing sentences together after a while. Yeah, like in, in your attempts, they would be cool and correct you. And mm -hmm. if you could remember that, you were getting somewhere. Yeah, it was really cool. But uh, those guys were cool. They were from Guatemala, Guatemala. So mm -hmm. I don't know if their Spanish is the same as Mexican. I know Mexican Spanish is different from Spanish in other places. Yeah, a little bit different. But it's yeah, also like, mostly uh, the same, too. Like Chinga Tu Madre. <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. some Mexican-only stuff. <laughs> oh, is it really? 
I, yeah, I think so. Like it, uh, uh, someone from Spain would be like, yeah, that's just, they say that in Mexico, but it doesn't make sense really here or something. I think. Interesting. If I remember right. Or maybe it was Venezuela or somewhere. I don't know. They speak Spanish in all these different countries, but it's like their variations. But it's um, Port Portuguese and Spanish are close enough that they can understand each other fu to function. I don't I know. I've, I've developed crew. a real affection for the language. It's very um, it's very melodic. Is is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. I love the sound of Japanese. Like being spoken with passion. It's one of the most be I think it's the most beautiful language. Oh. Yeah. I always have since I heard it like I heard it was probably like Shogun on TV or something when I was a kid. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> the dude's all scolding. He's like and the girl's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. there's something and i was just like these people are are alive as hell they're alive, they're really alive. <laughs> and it's something like if i heard that in english i'd be like those actors suck but because that language barrier is like there to obscure it it just seems so real and good to me like i like to watch anime subtitled and i feel like it's way better than if somebody tried to like dub in in the lines in English, you know, even maybe if it was a good actor, maybe even because it's like it sounds authentic and just I don't know something. There's something better about it. I don't. Did know, you watch the Animatrix? Anything. The Animatrix. Oh yeah, for sure. Crazy shit, man. Seems like it's, it's the script for the world. Mm hmm. Well, supposedly the, the Wachowskis did not. That wasn't an original idea of theirs. Supposedly, they they mm, took somebody else's idea and and made a movie out of it. Is what I heard. I heard that. Was it something that we'd recognize in another form, or was it just jacked? I think it was just jacked. Yeah, which wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it, Hollywood's known for doing that. <laughs> stabbing people in the back all over the fucking place just so they can they can promote their uh favorite people. So I don't know why anybody would want to go into the entertainment business these days. We have all this history of all these people getting fucked over by the business. Like why? Why would you do that to yourself? Yeah, my friend Ian went to LA for a while and he said the rumors are, are confirmed it's like the most soulless god forsaken place yeah I've been there fake everything is fake about it he says they're the Wachowski sisters now right yes god damn <laughs> I know, they destroy everything man <laughs> Absolutely like everything. Now you're your chick. <laughs> the thing is, I'm torn on this issue because I I know damn well we're under a chemical assault to confuse the genders, and so I feel like it's irresponsible of me to treat it purely as a cultural or mental health issue when it's actually, you know based in in all the gay frogs gay frogs yeah. i mean and if you look into it at all it's in your garden hose it's in your capri sun it's in your t-shirt it's in your bra it's, it's in, in everything everything it's in every goddamn thing they want 10 year old girls with full-size breasts and sterile men or something i don't know what what is what is it that they want just death they want us they want less of us more for them and less for us less of us they amended they're amending their old deal they're they are classic control freaks 
They they literally want control of everything. So they did this in the eighties. They did this uh, vaccine rollout that killed a bunch of people or introduced cancer or whatever, right? You, which but one? This are you time it's. About? Um. Oddly enough. Hey, uh, my my mother's husband is the one who told me about this. So I think it was maybe during Reagan. There was probably a, a swine flu scare or some kind of scare. Yeah, People that was uh, SB, 76. SB 40. 76, okay. the swine flu. He said the 80s, but... Eh, know, I mean, it's close enough. Close enough. But yeah, they did. Whenever they did they try did this again in seventy six, where they killed off a bunch of old pensioners that were taking money from the government and living off their retirement mm. with the medication, apparently with the vaccine, is what he was telling me. And then he got old enough to retire from his job, and all of a sudden he's got cancer. And he's taking the COVID vaccines. And I'm trying to talk him and my mother out of it. And he's the guy that told me about this happening back way back. He's like, oh, no, I do what my doctor says. So I don't know why. I just have to bring that up. (laughs) Weighs heavily on my mind, that Mm. shit. Oh, I, yeah, for obvious reasons. Oh, I was saying, but this isn't a little, a little, you know, balancing of the books operation. This is like Mm -mm. the big call, the big one, right? Because it's the new age. Don't they do the new age? Don't they bring that in with mass sacrifice and stuff? Or is that like some unfounded rumor that I heard somewhere? Uh, It sounds like what we've been witnessing for the better part of the last three years, if you ask me, is, is a mass blood ritual. Fuck yeah. I mean, they injected shit into people's bloodstream. How, how can you look at it any other way? I wish Sugar was here. Yeah. Same here. I, did I you invite him. him? Yeah, I did, but he, I don't know. He's, He's scared. He's scared well, to he come did, on Liberty Radio. He did Radio. such great video editing. Sugar's the shit, man. Yes. He 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 did the scene from Apocalypto where the priest guy is like, oh, the, you know, the sun is eclipsed and now we have to sacrifice mm-hmm. people. And he he juxtaposed that or interwove that with the dancing coof nurses and all the jibber jabber and Fauci and the clown show and the masks world, and like, the world economic forum world economic forum yeah and also the skexies from the dark crystal but like <laughs> all these brilliant like the vision of all his videos is just was just amazing like he did such great work on those well sugar uh, if i wish he was here right now yeah, yeah if you, shout if out you're listening uh we still got Almost ten minutes left before they kick us off the airwaves. You're you're welcome to come on. I mean, like, I make memes. Dead fella makes music. Uh, you make Liberty Radio. You make all these other. Uh, I just scream at endeavors. the endeavors. That's all I do. Scream at the internet. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I do. Hey. That's what we're, we're all, all doing, screaming man. at the internet, but sugar, <laughs> sugar does something um, next level with with the video. He does, and it reaches people. Like he made a uh, a he put the Netflix logo at the beginning of the um, trailer for <laughs> uh, what's what's that movie where they have all the the cadavers with the linguinis and the. Can I watch it? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm blanking on the name of it. Uh, but they interview all the undertakers, and they're talking about 
the weird stuff going on in these vaccinated corpses. Like, okay, I clots, understand what right? you meant they by can't, linguinis. Okay. Yeah, they can't get the blood out. They can't get uh, the embalming fluid in. They're using super amounts of pressure, and then they're squeezing out these long linguini things. Like, their whole veins are just sealed up like concrete. You know? Like, crazy shit. Murder. Like spiritual, spiritual warfare, man. Yeah, it's just fucking crazy murder. And so he puts the Netflix logo on the beginning and makes makes a short little clip and, and it's like I uploaded it to my YouTube with his permission and fucking it's got like 300 views or something. Like people see it. Oh, it's the Netflix died suddenly, right? That's I, what I it think is. That's what it was. Yeah. Died suddenly. Yeah. That's only movies. I'll have to go Can look for it because I don't think I've seen it. Can we play I, that I shit? might have to show it on the Thursday night show next week if it's good. Okay. It's definitely good. Yeah. So there's a guy named John O'Looney. He was the first one I was aware of. And I've got that through the Crow House bit shoot channel. That's where the dark web side <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> the infamous so, bit shoot. Yeah, shout out, shout so out that, to uh, Bitshoot because Liberty Radio we we publish on Bitshoot. <laughs> shout out to Max Egan. We're everywhere. Max Egan, uh, also the neighbor of the Drizzle, lives down the street. I think. I, I don't know if he's still there or not. I don't know. Yeah, I don't get out much. He came to America again, so apparently the border crossing is is pretty easy. Oh yeah, it's super easy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why people think it's so difficult now is you can literally just drive across they don't care well you know the last thing I heard was the US was on a list of countries that you had to be vaccinated to get into no that ended oh that's that's something yeah that ended back in May I think like I, think I remember I remember like someone at my school did something wrong and I knew I noticed it and like justice wasn't served. And I was like, okay, this is corrupt. Like this is wrong, but I still think I believed in the government for a while, <laughs> mm. but I don't see how anybody can after this, I guess we're just in our echo chambers and we're getting programs with the news mm -hmm. and spin. And we don't, I really, it's amazing when it's so disheartening when you go out and see normies and what they think and, and believe and it's like we're getting nowhere we're fucking doomed you know, like no shit i actually and i'm like you i'm black pilled since the set the shit was set into motion yeah that has to has to play out in this manner now you know oh yeah yeah it's there's only one way it, for it to go now yeah even if the people who orchestrated it all like mysteriously got abducted by aliens and no no longer plotted against us, we're fucked. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's well, that's good news. But I would still hope and nobody that the wants alien, to hear it. But yeah, I would still hope that the aliens do butt stuff to them, even though we're fucked. Yes, they should be indeed. fucked too. Well, for sure, <laughs> that would be justice. With with the potty tentacle. Yes. <laughs> Dead fella, give us an update on Bangladesh. I stay in my room, man. I'm, I'm with you guys all the time. He's like, me. it's true. He was with me for about four four hours today. Oh my goodness! Maybe five. Yeah, we were we were with each other. I mean, if you got that much free time, I could make you Liberty Radio music director. You could program all the music. Bro, I steal all my music from you, dude. Do you? Good. I, I really do. Like, every time I've watched your show, I've got, like, a song or two and been like, okay, this is going in my playlist. Good. That's how it should yeah, you've be. Got some sick, you've got some sick tracks, man. I wonder how you come up and, like, find these tracks, given the algorithms and everything. I have been slowly and carefully curating uh, a very specific 
source list over the course of the last three and a half years. Because again, nice. it, half of the, the music that I owned as of 2020 became unlistenable. So I had to go find new stuff. And some of the stuff I had to learn to listen to it again to separate the artist from the art and be able to see them as two separate things. Right. Which is not an easy task, especially if like uh, you have a favorite band or something that you've listened to for you know, 20, 30, 40 years of your life in some cases, and you find out, oh, they're just full of shit. That really right. sucks, man. Uh, yeah, one or 50 of those bands, or, you know, mm. whatever. If or they were just all full most of shit. Of them. Yeah. All at the same time. Like, um. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't think I was ever going to play uh, Bad Religion on Liberty Radio, but apparently I have. So I guess that's a thing now. Yeah, James played Bad Religion the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was a. I think that was an old show of his. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. that was a replay. That's I keep getting fooled. I keep thinking it's new. Can Speaking you, of, I thought it was before we get kicked off of the airwaves, folks. Uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night, starting at nine o'clock Eastern, for your Saturday night freakout dance party. We will be back at it again tomorrow night. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thanks I don't there. remember now. <laughs> I forgot both of the last two things I wanted to say. <laughs> oh, you're really high then. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I'm medicated with 